Hey everybody, thank you for joining me. Today, as part of my quest for the greatest virtual reality experience possible, I've got the opportunity to upgrade my CPU. I'm upgrading to a top of the line 5900X and seeing if that has an impact on my experience. Now before we jump into it, I need you to do me a favor. My stats show me that 96% of the people that watch my videos are not yet subscribed to the channel. Please do us a favor, help a fella out and press that subscribe button. Thank you very much. So, does CPU power impact your virtual reality experience? Previously, I've made videos talking about the kind of gear you need for a good VR experience. I've told you to prioritize your money spending on your GPU over your CPU because that is where the biggest gains will come. Today, I've got the opportunity to really test that because I'm gonna be increasing my CPU performance. Up until now, I've been running a 3800X. That's last gen Ryzen, it's sort of mid tier, it's eight cores, it's a pretty good CPU. The GPU I've been partnering it with is a top of the line 3090. I've been using fast RAM, I've been running off an M.2, everything is kind of maxed out except the CPU. So am I gonna get a bit of impact here? What I'm moving up to is a 5900X. That is one of the best CPUs on the market. As current gen Ryzen, it's sort of the second from their top, but the fastest you can get. You'd probably only go for the 5950 over it if you're really interested in heavy multi-threading activities, sort of things that aren't really sort of gaming focused. So I've gone for the best gaming focused chip out there. Now, I'm not expecting massive gains, but I'm interested to see what's gonna happen. So I've fired up a lot of benchmarks. I've benchmarked before the upgrades and after, and I'm gonna be comparing the results today with you. So firstly, there's a few challenges to discuss when you're benchmarking for VR performance. It's not quite as easy as with standard gaming. So there aren't many inbuilt benchmarks, so you have to do things manually. And that means trying to create as much of a sort of controlled run as you come. So running exactly the same step through each game, and keeping all the conditions as solid as you can. You've got to track your own performance. So I'm using stats from the likes of MSI Afterburner. I'm using FPS VR, which is a program that individually tracks VR performance and really testing the kind of impact that's happening. We run in a load of different games. Now the challenge is that often my performance is kind of maxed out anyway. So my headset renders at 90 hertz and it's at quite a high resolution and often I still hit that 90 pretty solid in many games. So I've pushed settings higher than I usually would to try and give myself a bit of headroom. That does risk shifting things over to the GPU as resolutions get higher and textures get higher but at least it gives us something to test. Where I've got uncapped frame rates in games, then we're gonna be taking the most of that and really you know, utilizing the CPU to see how much performance can be gained. I'm starting off with a few natively VR rendered games. The first game I jumped into was Half-Life Alex. Now in Half-Life Alex, I pushed the settings high. I pushed the render resolution high because I would usually get 90 Hertz in Alex. But did any games come? Well, yes, minimal, but yes. So with the 3800X, I was getting 45 frames a second with all settings maxed with render resolution higher than it usually would. So well above 100, trying to really take advantage of the anti-aliasing effects that come from that and really seeing the impact that will happen. So I saw 45 frames a second with the 3800X. When I switched over to the 5900X, that jumped up to 48. That's small, but it's there. It's, it is a difference and it shows that our CPU is having some impact, albeit limited. The next game I jumped into was Medal of Honor. Now up until very recently, there was no graphical settings you could play with in Medal of Honor at all. You just had what the game gave you. But recently they've added in a few settings. So I made sure all settings were maxed and I um, kept my render resolution high. But sadly, I saw no difference whatsoever between the two runs. The, the performance was exactly the same. That's okay, because I've always got good performance from it anyway, but I wanted a bit of difference, and sadly, that difference didn't come. Next up, I jumped into Star Wars Squadrons, and sadly, the story with Medal of Honor kind of continued here. So I pushed the settings right up, I kept the render resolution strong, and I saw no difference whatsoever. The two games ran almost identical. I did see the odd little peak and the odd little drop on both runs, but, um, it kind of averaged out pretty much the same. Now when I was doing my tracking, I was using FPS BR as mentioned, and it gives you a large number of stats. And in those stats, it shows you how much power from your GPU is being used, of what percentage, and what percentage of your CPU is being utilized. 
Now, in these games, I found that my GPU was at 100% and my CPU was very, very low. So almost none of it was being used in some of these games because they're so easy for the CPU to power. So it really, really is bottlenecked by the GPU and I think it would be for quite some time. So there really aren't many games to be had in your natively rendered VR games. But that wasn't the end of the story because there were other things we could play with. Next, I jumped into some Sims and then the thing really opened up. The first sim I jumped into was a set of Corsa. A set of Corsa is fantastic for this kind of thing because it's got a built-in benchmark, it's got an uncapped FPS in it and you can really, really test your CPU. So I ran two controlled runs and I saw some pretty massive differences. With the 3800X, my average FPS was 177. I saw minimums of 56 and highs of 241. When I jumped over to the 5900X, that really increased. I jumped up to an average FPS of 253, that's 177 up to 253, that's dramatic. Oddly enough, my minimums actually fell lower, which I can't explain, there should be no reason why it's faster, it's got more threads, there is no sort of downside, so I don't know why that came, but I ran multiple benchmarks and that was consistent, so very odd, but it could just be an anomaly. My max FPS really jumped up, it went all the way up to 379, that's 241 up to 379. So overall, my FPS difference between the two games was about 31% up on the higher chip. Now that's dramatic. Now you might think, yeah, but what's the point of all that? Because your headset can't render at those kind of speeds anyway. You only get 90 hertz, so anything above that is kind of lost. And I'd say, yeah, in this format, that's the case. But Assetto Corsa is a great game because it's got such a strong modding community and you can really, really step things up with the mods. I really recommend the likes of Soul, the weather mods, um, there are loads of loads of individual car mods and graphical intensity mods that you can stick in there that kick things up a gear. With this higher core CPU and higher speed CPU, you're gonna be able to take advantage of much more of that. So if this is a game that you love playing, I would recommend you increase your CPU power. So next I jumped over to a set of course of Competizione and I saw similar increases there. Now it wasn't quite as dramatic as it was in standard a set of Corsa, but I got a much, much more stable experience. My highs were higher, I saw less lows, and my average FPS stayed sort of around the same, but a much more stable experience and a really, really solid win. But that wasn't the peak, so things actually increased even higher from there. The next game I fired up was Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now that is one of the toughest games to run in VR. I have a really strong PC as mentioned with the 3090 and the 3800X that I've been running up to now. I've only been able to get about 45 frames a second. Now that is playable, it's a slow game and that feels okay, but I've always wanted more. I've always felt that this game's got more to give and I'd like to find out how to get it. And this 5900X really opened that up. So my FPS went up to 60, that's a 25% increase and it started to feel like a really stable and smooth game. If you're somebody who loves Microsoft Flight Simulator, then you need to be on the top of the line current gen CPUs to get the most from this game. So to conclude, should you increase your CPU to get better VR performance? Well, if you're into your standard sort of VR natively rendered games, I'd say the gains are going to be minimal and you're probably going to be spending too much for what you're going to get back. I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're a big simmer, and particularly if you like Microsoft Flight Simulator, I would say yes, yes, that's where you should be spending your money. It's going to be dramatic. I actually saw bigger increases from upgrading my CPU than my GPU in Flight Sim, and that amazed me. Anyway, that's it for me today, folks. Do us a favor, press that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel before you go, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Goodbye.